Welcome back everyone to more Farming Simulator 22 coverage here at Nepit Gaming. In today's video, it is all about auto load trailers. Now, if you're like me, you've been waiting for these mods to come out, well, pretty much since the release of FS22. Because whether it's all about those greenhouses and all the money you can make with those, or it's about those pesky wool pallets that the sheep give you, Either way, these auto load trailers will come in so handy on the farm. Now, there's a total of three, and you notice that we've only got two out here right now, and that's because for our illustration purposes today, we're going to use the third and final of these trailers. But first, we've got the Farm Tech trailer. Now, each of these are available in multiple configurations. What I'm showing you here is simply the baseline configuration, just to show you an idea of the size and the overall capacity of these trailers so if you're looking at a smaller operation then maybe this farm tech will be perfect for you or maybe you're going full industrial size and you need something like this crone trailer to fit your needs uh, so you're going to be able to fit tons of pallets in here so maybe you're like me and you get a little bit lax about collecting your pallets from the greenhouses well this will come to your rescue and give you the opportunity to collect many pallets at once, far greater than the capacity for the farm tech or the third trailer that we'll look at momentarily. So let's actually come into the storefront. We're under the mods and DLCs. Now I'll give you the link in the description down below to each of these uh, trailers. Here is the farm tech, 24,500. And as far as the design, you have your standard that we've already seen. Then you got your extension, which is appropriate for bales and then of course you've got your license plate so very basic setup there but the focus of these auto load trailers is on the pallets not the bales all right next is the agro liner which is the one that we'll be looking at for demonstration purposes here in a few moments the very convenient rails along the side on design one and then design two and three are more appropriate for things like bales now each of these trailers will be able to auto load one of two things. One will be the uh, liquid barrels, and then the second would be the actual pallets that we'll be looking at momentarily. All right, and then the, fi the final one, the crone. By default, we have this crone skin on the side, or if we change that up, we get the giant skin, which has a very game-specific look to it, or you can have the standard where you can simply design it based on the color palette that you prefer. So again, we're focusing on palettes here today. So let's, as we back out, we're gonna hit the tab key, hop over to the field where I have 15 uh, greenhouses, and we're gonna take a look at these palettes in action. So each of these three trailers works in very much the same way. Uh, if you're familiar with auto load pallets or auto load trailers in previous games, FS19 and before, then you might be used to simply driving by an area where there are several pallets and the trailer would automatically pick them up and stack them for you. Well, here you're going to need to hit the R key to manually load each one. And then of course the trailer will do the stacking for you. Also, we're definitely going to need to use these straps. These straps are very important because while the auto load trailers will all load these and stack them for you, they will slide around if they're not strapped down. And of course, if you're taking corners at too high a speed, they will come off the trailer, even when they are fastened down. Ask me how I know that. So here we are. This is about in game time, about four, four and a half hours have elapsed so this will give you an idea so we're looking at the uh, strawberry area right here so i have five strawberry greenhouses here then we move up we've got our cabbage greenhouses five of those and this will give you an opportunity of just the huge difference in the sheer volume that is produced of cabbage versus the strawberries and then we get up to our tomato so the volume here, not quite as much as what we saw with the strawberry, but certainly a lot more than the cabbage. Now that certainly doesn't say anything about the profitability of each one of these. That's a very different story, but the sheer volume, if you're looking to minimize your volume and the time you have to spend on these, then well, cabbage is where you wanna go. 
because four, four and a half hours in game time has had you nowhere near full on these. So what we're going to do is put these this trailer through its paces. Again, all three of these trailers work on the same principle, so they are very similar in that respect. So we already have a trailer part. Now, what you're going to want to line up with as far as your trigger is the very front of the trailer. This is going to give you your best bang for the buck because remember, we're going to have to hit the R key to load each one. And if you take a look in the top left hand corner, fourth one down, the R key is enable auto load and right now it shows six. That's how many we have within range. So I'm going to hit the R key and let's see, let's do enable, but we need to change the Y key because right now it's trying to auto load liquid tanks. Now we certainly don't need to auto load liquid tanks right now. So I'm going to hit that button. Now it shows pallets and let's start loading those. So again, I'm just hitting the R key and you can see it will only auto load the ones that are within range of the trailer. So anything in front of the trailer, in this case, alongside the tractor is not going to give you the option to auto load those. So once we pull up in front, we are good to go. Now I'm going to load up all three different types on this one trailer because we're going to stress test this thing and I'm going to show you guys exactly how it's going to stack these. You can already see that the cabbage is a different height than the strawberry. So that's going to make for some interesting stacking. And then when we start turning corners, that is going to make things even more interesting. So now I'm going to pull right up to the front of the trailer, even with the front of the greenhouse. And you can see that we're going to be able to auto load each and every one of those. So you do have a few concerns whenever you're doing these. And here we go. Our first corner. This one should be pretty easy. What's going to help us, of course, is the fact that we are very quickly loading up this trailer and there's not going to be a whole lot of room for these guys to move around. Okay, there you go. Now we come to more cabbage. This is where you're going to start to really mess with your stacking. Okay, so far so good. We got our railings on the side that are helping to keep everything in. And as we drive by, I'm simply going to continue hitting the R key so we can have all of this done. Now, here we go, a banked corner. You can already see they're starting to slide around and that is why you're gonna need to use those straps. The straps are definitely necessary here. So we're just simply gonna load this up with all it will handle or all we have available here on the farm right now in 15 greenhouses. And then we'll see if we can make it all the way to the storefront. And again, pay attention to those pallets. You can already see them moving around because we don't have anything strapped down right now. We're gonna see if that was a good move that we will survive or if it's going to be a bad move here momentarily. You can already see we're stacking three high. I'm trying to go real slow around these corners because I would prefer not to lose anything here in the sunflower field. Oh yeah, we're about to lose some here. Now stacking these things is not my forte. And there you go. So, oh, are we about to lose some here? I think we are. All right, I believe we have pressed our luck just about far enough. So there you have it. You can see we can stack them three deep. There's room for a few more, but quite frankly, I'm afraid we're about to lose these. So I'm simply going to strap these guys down and hopefully we don't lose any on the way to the storefront. Uh, this is, there we go. All right, now that everything is fully strapped down, you can see the beautiful stacking that we've got. Let's head over to the storefront and let's see if we can keep all of these wonderful fruits and vegetables ooh, attached and keep them from falling. Now, if we do happen to lose some, obviously we can simply auto load them back over to the trailer, but we would prefer not to do that. And here in just a second, once we get to the end of the road here and get back out to the main road, we'll take a look at where we want to send these. Now you notice I'm kind of swinging this tractor around a little bit just to test it out and see how much we can get by with. I can tell you for sure 
that if you take these corners like the one up ahead, 90 degree corner, and you take it full throttle, 33 miles per hour in this case, we will jackknife this trailer <laughs> and the tractor, and we will lose pallets. Again, ask me how I know that. All right, so now we need to come in and let's see where we're going to be taking these. Uh, so let's scroll down a little ways till we get to, obviously each one of these is going to have a different uh, perfect storefront to sell these at. Looks like the red marble is the perfect for tomatoes, strawberry, also red marble. Uh, lettuce, not the red marble, but we're going to go with it because the red marble is... I'll tell you what, never mind. Let's just go ahead over here to the grocery mart. My farm bank account is not going to be terribly happy with me not maximizing the income because, after all, that's why we're doing this, right? You can run the greenhouses and have them automatically sell everything for you, but I'm going to show you one of the potential downsides if you are not very careful. Now, these trailers do not have a good way of backing them up, so what I'm going to try to do is get close enough and have this thing auto-sell, and there you go. You can see even strapped down, it's going to have no trouble automatically selling these, with one exception. And the exception is if anything is flipped over on its side or upside down, then the auto sell will not work. Again, ask me how I know that. There we go. So even with our terrible stacking, we made it through just fine. So there you have it, folks. The auto load trailers, they do work as long as you're okay with a few things. Number one, the fact that you're going to hit R to auto load each one. So auto load does have a little bit of a manual effect to it. And then number two, make sure that you always strap them down. And then number three, be safe when you're driving. Because if you're not, you will lose pallets and or trailers and have to uh, reset them from the storefront. Again, ask me how I know that. So the straps are not the end all be all. That's going to do it for today. Hope you guys enjoy these auto load trailers as much as I am.